Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel You Learn Education Online. Today we will discuss the generation and the detection methods of pulse amplitude modulation signal. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Now first we will see what is a PAM. Nothing but what is the definition of a PAM signal. So the PAM signal is defined as the amplitude of a pulse carrier that is varied according to the instantaneous amplitude of a message signal. Now let us discuss what are the methods are there in order to generate a pulse amplitude modulation signal. So if you observe the PAM signal can be generated either by natural sampling or by flat top sampling. So you will see what is the definitions of a natural sampling and flat top sampling in the previous video and also how the waveforms will looks like. Now within the short span of time let us briefly discuss about the natural sampling and a flat top sampling. So if you observe the natural sampled waveform these pulses are having a varying amplitude. So whenever this type of signal is passed through a channel the noise effect will be more why because a varying amplitude pulses are there and also we cannot suppress the noise at the receiver part. So we cannot recover a message signal with the natural sample PAM signal is transmitted. So next see what is a flat top sampling. So if you observe this flat top sampled waveform these pulses are having a constant amplitude since whenever this type of signal is passed through the channel the noise effect will be less that is the noise added to this type of signal will be less and at the receiver part we can easily suppress or we can easily separate the noise and we can recover our message signal that is the advantage of a flat top sampling over natural sampling now what are the blocks or what are the circuits involved in order to generate a natural sampled pam signal and a flat top sampled pam signal we will discuss now now if you observe in order to generate a PAM signal first we have to generate a carrier pulse signal that is generated from your pulse train generator circuit or, or, or in other words we can say that with the help of a pulse train generator circuit we can generate a train of pulses and here the generated message signal is transmitted through low pass filter in order to obtain the band limit at its output. Now why we have to obtain a band limited signal is since we are using a sampling process the band limited is necessary in order to avoid the aliasing effect in the sampling process. That's why the generated message signal is once again passed through a low pass filter circuit in order to obtain the band limited message signal. And we also make sure that the cutoff frequency of this low pass filter circuit is always equal to the message signal frequency. In that case only we will obtain a perfect band limited message signal at its output. Okay, now the outputs of these two blocks are given as inputs to a multiplier circuit. Now the multiplier circuit will simply multiply these two incoming signals and will produce a natural PAM at its output. Now this natural PAM signal is transformed to a flat top PAM signal by passing through a pulse shaping network which will obtain a flat top PAM signal. Okay, this is the setup involved in order to generate a natural PAM signal and a flat top PAM signal from the message signal and a pulse carrier signal. Now we will see what are the circuits involved in order to generate the natural PAM and a flat top PAM. Now what is the circuit involved in order to generate a natural PAM is if you clearly observe to this circuit at the base terminal we are applying a message signal and from the emitter terminal we are taking the response implies this circuit is nothing but a common collector configuration. This circuit is in common collector configuration and it is also called as an emitter follower. Now this emitter follower we know that 
The emitter follow circuits always provide the output signal that is replica of an input. Means the output signal that is produced by the emitter follow circuit is same as an input signal. Now we will discuss how it will generating a natural PM signal or the working of this circuit. So if you observe that, that is, let us consider the case one. That is, if a pulse carrier signal is of a rising edge, since it is rising edge, we can consider that to the base terminal a positive voltage is applied. Since a positive voltage is applied to the base terminal of type of transistor NPN, since you know it is an NPN of type to the NPN type, a positive voltage is applied, the transistor will be in saturation region nothing but it is in on state and it will act as a short circuit means whatever the message signal that is applied or that is present at the input it simply passes at the output so this is happen only when the carrier signal is at rising edge so now what happens when the carrier signal is at the falling edge so if you observe that the falling edge indicates that a negative voltage is applied to the base terminal of NPN transistor. Since a negative voltage is applied to the base terminal of NPN, the transistor will be in cutoff state indicates it is in off state means it act it simply act as a open circuit since it is open circuit no signal will transfer at the output why because here it is an open circuit so in this way you will generate a natural pm signal depending on the switching action of a transistor with the carrier signal now we will see what is the circuit involved in order to generate a flat top pm signal now this is the setup used in order to generate a flat top PAM signal. If you observe, this is nothing but a sample and hold circuits. Here, the sampling switches are used in order to sample the incoming signal for every time interval tau s. At the input side, we are applying a message signal m of t, and at the output side, from the capacitor, we are obtaining a flat top PAM signal. Now let us discuss what is the operation of this circuit. If you observe the input terminals to the sampling switch and discharge switch are named it as G1 and G2. So now within the duration of time let us consider in the duration of time tau a pulse is applied to the input of a sampling switch and a no pulse will be applied at the input of a discharge switch at that time. Since the pulse is applied at the input of sampling switch, this switch will be in on state and the discharge switch will be in off state. Okay, since it is in off state, now the capacitor will start charging slowly according to the instantaneous amplitude of message signal and will hold that value till the next pulse arrives. So the capacitor will hold that value during the time interval tau. So after the time interval tau, let us consider that the G1 nothing but the gate input of a sampling switch at that point a no pulse is applied and a gate input that is G2 at this point a pulse is applied. So at that case the discharge switch will be in on state and the sampling switch will be in off state. So now this sampling switch will be off state. So the message signal will not transmit at its output. So the discharge switch will be in on state. So it act as a short circuit and it will provide a path for the capacitor to discharge its voltage. So in this way, depending on the pulses, applied at the inputs of a sampling switch and a discharge switch we will obtain a flat top signal at its output okay so these are the circuits involved in order to generate a natural pm signal and a flat top pm signal so next we were, we will going to see what is the demodulation method of pm signal or how we can recover our message signal from a pm signal 
Now, what are the blocks involved in order to recover our message signal from the PAM signal is? First, the PAM signal is passed through either an envelope detector or a sample and hold circuit. Now, the output of a sample and hold circuit is passed through a low pass filter. Now, what is the output of a sample and hold circuit? And what is the fun functionality or what is the purpose of using a low pass filter? We will discuss now or we will see now. So, if you observe that this is the internal block of a sample and hold circuit. Here we are having a switch and a capacitor is used. So, to the input of a switch, a PAM signal, nothing but a sampled signal is applied. And from the output of a capacitor, we are considering a pulses. Now, this switch will be on and off for every time interval tau s means in with the duration with some part of duration of tau this switch will be closed and the pam signal will be transferred through the capacitor at that point simply the capacitor will start charging and it will hold that value till the next pulse will arrive okay so after uh, some duration of, after the completion of a duration of tau the switch will be open at that time the capacitor will hold that value in this way the capacitor will hold the values, the samples of a PAM signal. If you observe that, the output of a signal can be looks like a pulse signal. Okay, so in this way, we are having a pulsed or a holded pulsed signals at the output of a capacitor. Now, this type of signal is simply passed through a low pass filter which will shape or which will smoothen the incoming signal. So, at the recovered message signal, we will obtain the incoming message signal from the PAM signal. Okay, I hope all of you understand this concept and if anybody having doubts, they can message in the comment box. Thank you.